Hello guys and welcome back! This video was initially uploaded only on my Patreon page. But because Christmas is coming, I want to share it with you as a gift. What is it about? Well, some old and secret communist technology. And this is it. But what is it? Well, it has a big transformer in the back. And some dead spiders. Wow! You think this is a welding machine? Well, you're wrong. Or maybe it's a variable transformer. Wrong again. It's a homemade car battery charger from the early 80s. Okay, it may look difficult, but I'll talk you through this innovative technology. It has an LCD display, a digital rotary selector, wireless cables. To hold this device in place, it doesn't have rubber pads, but the tips of these two screws have pierced the bottom panel and they hold it in position. Very nice. And this is the antenna for the Bluetooth connectivity. Apparently the word safety hasn't been invented until late 90s. So what's up with this dinosaur? Well nowadays car batteries are pretty good, they last for 5 or 6 years. But in the 80s Romanian car batteries were rubbish, they worked for 3 or 4 years. And inevitably in a cold winter morning the car didn't start anymore. But if you have one of these you can pass the winter even with an old battery. This charger belongs to my future father-in-law and it's broken. It doesn't need it anymore, it's just symbolic. But because I'm the best son-in-law, I'll try to fix it. Then I'll have his blessing. Let's find the problem. First I will dismantle this very efficient power supply unit. This device was stored in the garage many years, so there is a lot of dirt in it and all the screws are rusty. No rusty screw can defeat me. They didn't even bother to paint the box behind the knob. So what's the technology here? There is a big transformer with multiple outputs. Something like this. The outputs go to this selector. Then to a bridge rectifier made with four diodes with heat sinks. Then to the ammeter and then to the battery. This wire doesn't look very good. Can it deliver 10 amps? I used the brush and cleaned the components a bit. Now it's time for some measurements. The primary winding is not burned. And this is the secondary winding, which is fine. But what about the ammeter? It's okay. What about the mains wire? To measure the diodes correctly, I need to remove them from the circuit. But first I want to test the transformer. I will connect it like this. Ok, let's test it. That's a nasty sound. But it didn't blow up. Let's test the transformer output. And now the rectified voltage through the selector. The first position 10 volts. 11.3 volts. 12.3 volts. And maximum 13.3 volts. The peak voltage will be higher because the battery will act as a big smoothing capacitor when I connect it. So what's the problem? Is it only this broken wire? Actually, there is a hidden problem. The output has no power and sometimes the voltage drops suddenly. So I need to disconnect the diodes and check everything. Look at this wire. What manner of terrible things happened here? 
These connections are rubbish, I'm guessing somebody shorted the output by mistake, so the high resistance wires and connections melted. But what about the diodes? This one is fine. Next. Something is wrong here. This diode is conducting in both ways. Houston, we've had a problem. This diode is busted. I don't think it will help my cause. I'm referring to me receiving my father-in-law's blessing. But don't worry, the 40 years old diode will not stand between me and my happiness. I will replace it with this 20 amps bridge rectifier, which is also very old. The load should not exceed 10 amps, but I will place it on this aluminum heatsink just in case. I will replace the thin and faulty wires with these brand new ones. You can see that it's much thicker than the old melted wire. I also need to clean these wire connectors. This is a nice soldering joint. I will replace the mains cable with this one from an old computer. The wiring is finished. I replaced the thin and faulty wires with thicker ones. The mains cable is soldered directly to the transformer. I added the ground wire here. And this nut is to prevent from accidentally pulling the mains cable out. I also tightened the transformer screws, so I'm hoping it doesn't make that buzzing sound anymore. But before I install all the components back in the box, I want to clean it a bit. And after a few minutes of cleaning, you can see that it's still ugly. I will replace all the rusty screws with shiny new ones. I don't know if it matters, it's just a desperate attempt to make it look better. The bridge rectifier will be fixed with the heatsink to the side panel. The interior looks much better and colorful than it was at the beginning of the video. The ammeter is next, it looks a bit better after cleaning. I finished tightening the screws, it's time to upgrade the output cables. You remember those initial battery connectors. I will replace them with these new battery clamps. So I cleaned the wires a bit and grouped them together with pieces of shrinking tubes. On the positive wire I installed a fuse holder and I will insert a 10 amps fuse. And at the end of the wires I soldered the battery clamps. Let's see if it still has that buzzing sound. Well, yes, but you can barely hear it now. It's time for some nail polish. I want the knob arrow to be more visible. The arrow also needs to point to something, so I will mark the positions of the rotary switch. And it's finished. It works and it looks a bit better. The only problem is that the rotary switch should increase the power from left to right. To fix this I need to solder those thick wires in reverse order in the back of the rotary switch. The reason I'm not gonna do that is because I don't care, I just want to fix it and make it safer. Job done. But to be sure let's test it. First I will power this 55 watts car light bulb. Maximum 2.3 amps. And now a lead acid battery, I'm not gonna use it on my car, but I have here an old UPS, which you can see doesn't turn on. It hasn't been charged for more than 6 years, so the battery is probably dead, 
but I'll try to revive it. This was a 7 amp hours battery, but now it probably has less than a quarter of its initial capacity. As I expected, the battery is dead, but I'll try to charge it anyway, what do I have to lose? So I'll just connect the clamps to the battery. But wait, that's not right. How much current will this dead battery draw? I think it's better to limit the charging current with this light bulb connected in series with the battery. And here we go, with the first power setting. It started with 0.7 amps, but it's slowly decreasing to 0.5 amps. That's enough for this old unsafe battery. After half an hour I try to turn on the UPS. The battery doesn't have enough power, but at least the display light is reacting now. So there is still some life left in this battery, I'll continue with the charging. Another 10 minutes have passed and the light bulb started to light up, so there is very little current going to the battery. Now I can remove the light bulb and connect the charger directly to the battery. It's using around 0.8 amps. After another 20 minutes the charging current got up to 1 amp. That's weird. Let's try to turn on the UPS now. Hey, it works! I'll power the UPS from the mains now. It's charging the battery, that's good. Let's simulate the power outage. It's still working on battery, but you can see that the capacity is dropping very fast. So this is my video about some very old and secret technology. I hope you enjoyed it, bye!